Suppose you are taking a sample of quarters in order to estimate the population mean mass of the coins. If you want to keep the margin of error less than 1 gram, the standard deviation is 2.3 grams, and you will be using a 95% confidence interval, what is the minimum sample size needed? First of all, let's understand the formula for the sample size needed. If you solve that margin of error formula, you get the sample size n that's needed equals z, your z-score, multiplied by the standard deviation, divided by the margin of error, and this whole thing is squared. So we've got the standard deviation, 2.3 grams. We've got the margin of error, that's 1 gram. But what we don't have now is z. Now, uh, using a 95% confidence interval, if you do this enough times, you'll probably start to memorize that z equals 1.96. However, so we could just plug this in right now, but I want to show you how to plug this into Excel using the norms inv function to find a z, because sometimes you don't, uh, you'll have a different confidence interval. So you want to be able to use that norms inv, or a table, a table is fine, but Excel is nice because you can uh, set up something that I'm going to show you here, and you can just change the numbers and readily get a required sample size. So first of all, a little understanding of what the norms inv function does. It finds a z value. If this is the standard normal distribution, it finds a z value such that between z and negative z, you have the, the confidence level that you're looking for. So if we're looking for a 95% here, or an area of 0.95, the z value is actually above all of this area. It's above everything. I mean, you know, that 95% that and the stuff to the left. So this z, the way the um, Excel works, is that z equals norms, the S is for the standard, uh, standard normal distribution, I, N, V, and then it talks about the probability. And that probability is, is what we have in green here. Everything to the left, the left of that, um, that z-score. So, if we have an area in the middle of 95%, then what is all that area to the left of the z-score? So because we're going to have this, this extra little bit uh, added on. Well, you can, you can do it a couple of different ways, but I like to do it like this. Excel sees it as all this area to the left. So this area here is 0.5 if we split it right down the middle. So we have 0 0.5 plus this area here is half of the middle region, half of the confidence level. So uh, 0.5 times the confidence level. So in our case, that's 0.95. All right, so that's what we're going to put in. That is what we're going to put in for the norm sine v to find the z value. And then I'm going to uh, show you through, walk you through this entire equation in Excel so that you can set this up on your own and then you can go ahead and just uh, change the numbers anytime you want, anytime you want a, um, a required sample size. So norms I and V, this is what we have. I showed you the 0.5 plus the 0.5 times. Now I called this cell B5, B5, and that is the, the confidence level. I've got it set to a percent there. I could certainly change that to 0.95 as the confidence level, but I've, I've got it coded in as a, a percent in Excel. Times B4 is the sigma. This is the cell B4. Okay. So times B4. So we've got our Z value here. And then times B4 divided by the error. And that's 
in, in the cell B3 that I have there. So divided by 1. This entire thing is in parentheses. And the nice thing about Excel is the way it, it highlights these, these parentheses when you go past them. And then caret, this is uh, just over your 6 key on your, on your um, keyboard. So caret, so to the power of 2. So this whole thing is being squared. So you can pause it and write that down if you want. Now, I'm going to go on to the answer. We get 20.3. Always round up. I've got a little formula here. Just round up of that. Uh, always round up this this number so that you you get the uh, no more than uh, the margin of error that you're looking for. So don't round your traditional method to 20. So if you need 20.3 people, you actually need 21, 21 people, or in this case, coins. So 21 coins is the answer to this question. Now B, B is going to go a little bit faster because I've already talked through uh, this norms I and V. All I want to show you here is the formula for the for the um, sample size needed for a proportion, and that is n equals the proportion in mind times one minus the proportion times the z-score over the margin of error and just this part is squared just the z over e is squared so we're gonna find z in the same way now the p the p I've got a little note here and that is if you if you have no guess at, at p right there's a guess at p if you don't know uh, anything about the the um, the data that you're that you're going to collect or anything like that, then you're going to you're going to want to just say my best guess at the proportion is is 50 percent, 0.5. But if you've done some previous study, you can maybe change this to to 0.3 or something like that, and that would that would go in with this p. But if you don't have a good guess for that, it's just 0.5. So this problem that says if you are trying to estimate a population pr proportion and hope to keep the margin of error less than 0 0.03 with a confidence level of 95%, what is the minimum sample size needed? So um, it doesn't say anything about we, we have some previous knowledge about the proportion. So here we go. Here's the formula. It's a little bit bigger because there's, there's more involved here. But here's our P. So that's, this, is, this is the B15 times 1 minus p, and then times all of this. Let's get this whole thing in here. All right, times all of, of this stuff. We've got the norms INV, just like I did in the last part, uh, to get the, the z score, the z value, and then divided by that margin of error. Here we have it as b14, uh, so, so no more than plus or minus three percent or point zero three and then just this part is being squared so you see where the parentheses come in they go it goes from from here to here and just that part is being squared just like in this red formula here so we tape all that in and that just lets the excel do the formula for us really do the, the work for us so that we can change these numbers anytime we want and get a another required sample size and again we round up we, we get a number of 1067.07 it's right over that but you always just round up for that so there's a little example I'm gonna bring this back up so you can pause it if you like to and, um, and copy down that formula so you can you can use that and build a sheet like this for yourself